Hello, I thought I would just come back on. It's been a little while um, and I wanted to just show you how to create your Substack website. So if you're interested in a different look and feel to your Substack, you can play around with the color, the background color, the accent color, you can play around with the format in. And I just thought it'd be really interesting to show you how to do that. Um, I've had this question quite a few times and um, yeah, I think it's a really nice thing um, either when you're just setting up or when you've been um, set up for a little while. So I'll go ahead and share what I mean. So this is my um, Substack website for Creatively Conscious, which is primarily a membership portal for full hearted living and behind the scenes of my business. And I do write some articles on here and send my newsletter through here as well. So it's got a kind of a certain look and feel to it. I've gone for this kind of oatmeal background and I've got the same on Sparkle on Substack, which is my Substack teaching platform. Um, and here in the back office is where you find how to edit those things on your website. So this is in settings. So you want to go to this area in settings and then you're going to click into website and it'll just push you down here. So say you wanted to customize the way that everything showed up. Um, Substack's going to give you a few options. You can have two options of layout there and then you can have these different options here as well and you can just play around with which one suits your work and your creativity best you can choose to show top posts and by top posts they mean the posts that have had the most interaction and the most views you can show you can choose that or not so we'll go ahead and turn that one on um for now we've had it turned off for a little while and then i've got this group sections or tags checked and i've got this as a tag this as a tag this is a tag and then this as a section all in and I could add some of some other stuff as well so I could add this as well um self-seeded business so this is more of the behind the scenes of my business so I'm going to go ahead and add those I've retired Substack tips from this place and moved them over to sparkle on Substack so you can find them there there you'll see the color that I've chosen and the accent just for fun I'm going to mix it up and choose a different color she says I've choose, chosen exactly the same color so I've chosen a different pink there hmm what do we think shall I stick with that maybe I'm gonna go with green oh it's so hard isn't it I'm just gonna go, I'm just gonna go with that and then set that theme there um it's taken me back out and obviously um brought me back to that space where we just click into it again into customize um and finish scrolling down there's your options of fonts if you want to change your fonts it gives you a little bit of an option around what you choose so I've chosen them I mean you can labor over it if you want um thankfully there's not too many options but yeah it just gives us a bit of a um a bit of an option doesn't it to customize it and do things with um a different look and feel to them change things up I wouldn't um advise changing it too many times um obviously play around when you're first in your test and adjust stage for Substack, but try and keep it so that people will start to recognize that it's you and your work. I have exactly this same oatmeal color on, I um, don't know why it's not, oh, there we go. Um, this same oatmeal color on Sparkle on Substack as well. Um, so it's given me the option to see my welcome page there. Um, home page. Oh, there we go. So it's put it's pulled through most popular there, which actually looks quite nice. It's just a really small set of tabs at the top. Then we've got wholehearted living, membership, creative projects, and my big dreams and quiet ambition guest post series. And then it's popped self seeded business there. Now, if I wanted to prioritize self seeded business, all I would do is just do that and do I'm actually going to put my membership at the top then self-seeded yeah so it just gives you the option now as a multi-hyphen obviously I have a lot of these um you don't have to and I think that you know there's a real decision making process in setting this up in a way that is going to make sense to other people so you know we need to kind of focus on not being too confusing so as I've tagged membership and self-seeded business and it, some of the posts are the same. It's going to be confusing to people as to why it's tagged twice and they're sitting on top of each other. So I might just move that around. There we go. 
So the members see their stuff at the top and then people can have a little scroll down and read some other things that aren't paywalled and read creative projects. I might actually put creative projects. How does that look? Yes, I think we're there. I think we're good. So we'll set that theme and then it's going to let us go back to um, managing the home page. Now, I haven't put any links on the home page as such yet, but this is where you could do that. I click back into settings and then website again. Um, and then it gives you the option to toggle colored links on and off. So I have them switched on. So that means when you um, make a URL within a post, it's going to show it in whatever accent color you've got. So mine's pink and then previous and next post links. So that's something that Substack will help us with and, um, and pull that through. Then we've got this image cropping option that we can change to smart cropping or center. I just leave it on center and I've not had any problems with it. And then the navigation. So we go back here, this part here, this little tab here um, of navigation, you can change that up as well. And this is the place that you would do that. You can move things around the same way that I showed you. So Stay Creative on Substack is now switched off. You can switch things on and off. I could move notes from the sea. Um, and then it's Creative Projects and Membership. It says you membership there. It should say your membership. <laughs> it's putting a little typo. Um, yeah, so you can move those things around. Could just say membership, couldn't it? I can change that after I've done this. Um, there we go. Look, I would just go in, actually just delete that. There we go. So quick and easy. Um, I'm glad I spotted that. Isn't it funny that's been up there for ages and I didn't spot that at all, but there we go. I've spotted it now. It's all fixed. And then you can turn archive on and off. I would advise leaving archive on because if someone's coming to your publication and they're confused about, you know, who you publish, what you publish for who, then they can just click into archive and see everything. And I've turned newsletters off because obviously I've started something and then changed my mind about it. Definitely leave the about page on because people can see that in the app. So that's a really useful thing. Um, so, yeah, just a really whistle stop tour through changing up your Substack website and um, making it clear. Always think about the person who's landing on it that doesn't know your work and doesn't know you and ask yourself, is it clear? I used to have a start here. Um, invitation here and I changed it to membership and I'm still working on this to be honest I'm kind of still sitting with it and making sure that it's clear I do think start here was a bit clearer to people who are joining as a free subscriber but I've been doing a real push on holding space for my members recently so I've put that there for now and I'll probably change it up again Um, I'll go over to sparkle so you can see the difference and there's not there's not much difference um, again, so ideally I would have a graphic here, but I just haven't got around to it. It's not my skill set. I'll have to ask my VA to help. Um, I've got some tabs that people can click into here. I've got the most popular switched on. And then I've got my membership area, Substack growth tips, recent posts. Um, and that's it. So, yeah, I hope that was useful. Um, what I'd say is that if you're not confident with branding, and colors that can look good and complementary together. Maybe start a Pinterest board and have a little look at what you're drawn to and what you like. Um, think about all of that. Think about working with a professional, you know, if you've got the budget to invest because we can very quickly make something look hideous and ugly. I know from experience of trying to manage my website over the years and I still struggle with it. So with Substack, it's very, very easy to make it look nice. And I think that you just need to be sure that it works for you. And if in doubt, just keep it white and have one accent color and kind of use that for the month. Pick a um, formula for the homepage, use that, see if you like it, then you can try another one. Um, I hope that's been useful. If you want to follow my work, um, I'm over on Sparkle on Substack and I'd love to support your journey. There are lots of free posts, there's a podcast and there's a membership area as well. So I might see you over there. Thanks, guys.